let the vote decide it you know on a majority because it's democracy everybody will de uh, decide but you are able to bring in a perspective which others have not seen in the discussion you know that is what is very very relevant for the uh, entire discussion of the uh, organ uh, you know the board discussion healthy discussion continuous learning compliance knowledge because if you are an independent director we should know what our roles responsibilities whether we have dno insurance whether uh, if something is going wrong quarter on quarter whether we are able to get the information from the ceo and from the compliance officer whether things have been done and unbiased open you know, uh, unbiased opinion he just said you know that how to take care of because we are not here just to take care in fact we are not there to take care of the promoter's interest we are there to take care of the minority interest and the rest all stakeholders interest and that's where there and today the talking point is esg you know on the esg parameters what best we can add to the board is or what is happening across the globe which can be brought into our decision making or which can be brought into our organization how it can sustain the organization to long for a long time so uh, i went it long but uh, these are the things mm. which are required for uh, to be sitting on a board for sure thank you uh, rama ji for uh, you know detailing out the traits and basically you know the personality of an independent director i think that came out very well from uh, what you uh, told what you shared with us so having known you know what is really uh, required in an independent director we'll probably now move on to the uh, selection process santosh ji if you could just elaborate mm -hmm. on the selection process of an independent director you know what what people go through during the selection process of an independent director uh, so i'll uh, hand it over to you for that question yeah thank you vijay lakshmi ji yeah rama ji has given in detail about all the qualities and traits required uh, by an independent director for an independent director now from the board's perspective perspective you know the selection process uh, see actually the independent director is one of the you know uh, part of is a part of the board uh, and board is the apex of the organization see the ball actually in the <laughs> from the bottom it starts rolling up you know from the manager gm then kmp then it stops at the board it can't go anywhere up so <laughs> there is nobody above the board so independent director is a very important position uh, along with other members of the board uh, generally what happens is uh, uh, now the since because after 2013 14 uh, uh, the new rules and regulations have come up it has uh, it has changed the dynamics totally earlier uh, the independent directors were uh, part of the you know close uh, group of uh, you know with the within the promoters so now what has happened because the, the new rules has uh, many of them may be knowing uh, the there is an age limit of 75 years uh, then uh, there is a, a limit of uh, only term two terms uh, for an independent director you know two consecutive terms then there is again a limit for the independent director they can only be in seven companies like seven listed companies so having all these uh, Uh, you know rules and regulations uh, there is a requirement of lot of independent directors uh, in the you know corporate world uh, and uh, other thing is a lot of new companies are coming up now a uh, lot of uh, new uh, you know unicorns uh, and other uh, sme industries are coming up so there is a demand for uh, independent directors and uh, and another one more issue is uh, 50 the generally specified that 50% of the board members should be independent directors and uh, in case it is a chairman cha if the chairman is an independent director then it can be that one third so uh, these are the issues but uh, checking on these issues uh, uh, what i uh, my experience and uh, analysis of uh, you know uh, the selection process there is no structured selection process as we have all seen because my joining as an independent director or ramaji or uh, you know murli ji uh there is no structured process uh, wherein uh, a system is adopted by any company what i find is uh, uh, there can be three four uh, systems or uh, uh, adopted by companies one is uh, generally they select uh, independent directors from the known circle you know the close people known to the promoters known to the kmps and they they have their own database and from there they uh, select the you know independent directors they make an interview and all the things the other uh, is through agencies there are agencies database uh, uh, having profile of various independent directors from where they can select and maybe there are cases some cases where such things happen and uh, 
now uh, as you may be knowing uh, iica is uh, there which has started uh, their own database where more than i think uh, 17000 people are registered who are qualified as independent directors so that is one uh, option available to corporates to select independent directors even after all these things uh, uh the uh, the the formalization of independent directors happens through the nrc so there is a nomination remuneration committee where they approve the selection of the independent director subsequent to the promoters uh, you know interview and other things uh, so once the nrc approves the appointment then it goes to the board level where in again the board level they approve the uh, pass the resolution and approve the appointment of independent directors and subsequently it has to be again approved by the shareholders so that is a three step process uh, once the shareholders approve uh, the uh, the independent director and it is final and it is uh, published uh, to sebi and uh, you know companies act so these are the in brief but uh, what i find is uh, there is no structured uh, selection process it depends on the company it depends on different companies how they adopt which uh, system and uh, as you may be knowing many companies what they do is uh, they just want to fulfill the criteria set down by sebi so they their main purpose is to fulfill the criteria there are some companies which have more independent directors than required you know more from they look for more professionals uh, they uh, maybe some 80% or 70% of the board is independent directors so there are many companies who are looking in that direction so uh, as uh, ramaji has told about the qualities the board also has to look into such uh, you know qualified independent directors on their uh, you know list i think this is in brief which i am uh, i could uh, enumerate thank, thank you. you thank you uh, santosh ji for elaborating the process mm. and uh, over to uh, muralidharan ji and uh, right so we looked at it from the independent director side now when we look at the company side so what are the challenges that companies are facing in appointing independent directors there are independent directors uh, quite a lot of them are available uh, but still companies you know uh, do have a challenge in terms of getting the right independent uh, directors so your views on that sir absolutely i think you know that, that's a good question So obviously, first and foremost is to get the you know, well-qualified candidates. Right, so that will be the first challenge that any uh, company looks at or any board looks at. Because I would look at it also from a board perspective. So how do you get the right skills, mix of skills, experience, and independence mm-hmm. that is required to do it? Obviously, there are multiple ways. Uh, as Mr. Santosh ji said, right today, today, today there is opportunity to also look at. agencies which provide board advisory services like we have a board no like you have management talent management agencies today there are also board advisory services that are available which basically looks at the overall composition of the board evaluates the board composition and then helps you basically get the right type of candidates that basically you do that you know, i'm also trying to talk about possible solutions with you the second very clearly is to how do you ensure that there is absolute independence right because end of the day uh, how do you, because that cannot be because as we have been talking about it it's not that every time it has to be somebody uh, who is basically has a, a financial transaction with the company you know if you are a relative or if you are a friend okay how do you ensure that you do not you keep your independence separate to any other relationship that you may share with the company Right? like if you are a you know, friend of a kmp referred so you may not be uh, officially related to anybody so it may you can be deemed as independent but are you really going to act in an independent manner right i think that's something that needs to be looked at as a challenge with it there so third is you know when you are hiring an independent director one needs to look at how is it going to get a cultural fit into the organization right because you have other board members both independent directors as well as executive directors on the board and you need independent directors who will join who has to have a cultural fit into the organization so that everybody is able to align which again very closely relates to board dynamics i think ramaji had actually talked about it uh, earlier 
because the board dynamics is extremely important to look at it from a perspective so that we can ensure that we are able to get the right inputs right i think that's going to be extremely important as well uh, you know so to ensure that you have a very functional board because you don't want a dysfunctional board right which is basically taking the organization in a very different direction and rather than strategically taking it forward landing up you no know, in a different direction which is not hygienic for the organization the fourth the next challenge is today getting quality talent at the top means you need to look at the right compensation and incentives you know i know once upon a time you know probably uh, independent director were more looked at a post retirement activity once you're out of your corporate role you become an independent director <laughs> user experience and then obviously you take your sitting fees uh, for your board meeting and committee meeting and go on but today you have much younger directors who are coming on the board now you have certain companies who have also board members who are in their late 20s or early 30s correct right who are very dynamic because they get bring a very different perspective because today especially based on the industry that you are in right if you are in a fmcg industry you need to understand the mindset of the gen z you cannot have directors or old or old who may not understand the key stakeholder which is the customer here in this case because the business exactly exists because of its customers so when you're bringing in that diversity how are you going to attract the right talent what is the type of compensation philosophies that you have and 